kind of like steer us into the Project 2025 book ban. Um, so the list that was going around from what I saw wasn't necessarily an official list. It was more just these are books that have already been banned on this basis before in libraries and in schools because although it's not going to happen nationally like all at once and and things like that it's starting to happen in more conservative areas where they're saying things with libraries like oh if parents find something to be questionable and not appropriate for minors they can report it they can potentially get a cash like reward for reporting it and then the library gets fined and so I forgot what the the place was, but there's already like libraries saying that they're going to be adults only, so they don't have to worry about like, oh, is this too inappropriate for minors, even if it's just like regular, like middle grade or YA fiction. The Heritage Foundation is uh, the horrible group that where all the people from Project 2025 who like wrote their like manifesto is what I call it because it basically is a crazy manifesto. They're all from that foundation. And they worked with the Moms for Liberty group the last however many years to try to get books banned at schools and things like that and just like cause chaos in okay. general. Like a lot of the worst stories you'll see is in the state of Florida, but I've heard stories of them doing that in like Utah. Um, I'm sure they're doing it even in the state that I live in. I just don't know about it as much. Um, because I don't have any kids that like go to school, so I wouldn't hear about it as much, but mm -hmm. they've been doing that for a few years, like kind of setting the scene of like what they want and without sounding crazy, it, like this is literally what they think. They think that any book with any sort of like queer or like woke, and I'm saying that with quotation marks, <laughs> woke ideas is like propaganda. They think that anything with anyone queer in it is like porn and that and so the way that they literally put it is that if libraries and librarians and book and like any librarians because they're focused on schools so far would have that then it would be like they 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 think that those librarians should be charged as like people doing sex crimes yeah or yeah. giving children books <laughs> that have just non-white characters in them that and queer people existing in them not even queer people in relationships yeah and of course like the big books that people knew that they've tried to ban or like have brought up like fully trying to ban from schools is rick riordan and also like Twilight and The Hunger mm -hmm. Games and other books like that, all of those books are written by white authors. And so I know that they have gotten books banned by non-white authors yeah. already. And they would do it, like if, if they're doing it this much with these books, imagine what kind of stuff they're gonna pull with authors that don't have that sort of like clout, I guess, in like a white supremacy world that aren't white, that aren't cis, it would be even worse for them, but it's also just a wild thing that that that's their priority, I guess. Like, mm -hmm. it makes me like a level of like anger that I don't feel that often mm -hmm. to think about how they're doing this because they say that they're trying to protect children. Yeah. And I'm like, you're not protecting children. I really would like you to stop acting like you are because you're not you're putting children in more danger mm -hmm. because <laughs> I've actually never so far talked to somebody who grew up in an abusive family that did not love the library yeah like, we all go to the library I like in bookstores but just libraries let's start with just libraries because that's what they're focusing on right now is wanting to like arrest librarians as sex crime people for giving children books i'm just remembering times when my this is not like an over exaggeration my dad would come home from work and i would literally run like out of my house 
and mm-hmm. like literally run like run away and there was a tiny little bookstore that was like a five minute run away from our house and there's also the library and i used to like literally run out of the house when he would come home because i would be so scared of what he would do to me when he came home that i would run to one of those places and just stay there for like an hour or a couple hours or so and the person who owned the bookstore would just let me sit there and like read whatever book for free when when like my parents were getting divorced and my dad was especially absolutely insane um my sister and i didn't want to be at home when he was there by ourselves like when just he was there Mm -hmm. when my mom had to work on the weekends at her grocery store job and so we would leave and go to the bookstore and just sit there for hours and hours on end or we would go to the library and just like read teen magazines or read books or whatever for hours and then you know go steal candy from my mom's grocery store when we like ran out of places to go and but because we couldn't go we literally could not go home and because it was that he was that dangerous and out of control then that like we did not i did not know what would happen if we were at home and so it's like we can't be here so let's just leave and so like if there is no library where the fuck was i gonna go like where the hell was me and my like me when I was 11 and 12 and my sister when she was nine and 10, where were we going to go? If the library was closed, if there was no bookstore where there was nowhere for us to go. And like, where, where are we going to go? We lived in a small town where everything was like 15 minutes away driving. There was like a gas station. There's a couple gas stations, like a Walgreens. Yeah, and the cool. grocery store that my mom worked at, but you can't stay at like businesses for hours on end, especially when you're a kid. And we didn't have any money to like buy things and you have to buy something to be in those places. So like, mm-hmm. what, where, what are abused kids supposed to do? Like we read these books. I used to write fan fiction about me being in real doll books inside my head as a way to like cope with what was going on in my life. And so like, how are we supposed to survive our childhood which is already so difficult it's so impossible to survive that to start with but how are we supposed to survive it if you take away like one of the only things we have that is safe to go to like my dad couldn't get mad at me if i said that i was at the library Mm -hmm. like that was one place where i could go to and i would still like leave when i was there earlier than I wanted to because I would be afraid that he would show up and start screaming at me and telling me to go home and but still like that was like one place I could we could go and so it's like where if you're going to take a library away from kids and you're going to take away books like Percy Jackson that teaches them that they're being abused and that it's wrong that they're being abused like if you don't want kids to know that why don't you want them to know that and then also if you don't want them to do that at a library then figure out another place for us to go. Yeah. Like do that first, but you're not gonna do that first because you guys are the abusers. You want your kids to stay home and just have to live under your rule. You don't want them to have the freedom to actually decide who they are for themselves. You want to make them be who you want them to be. Mm -hmm. And it's just, so the, the stuff at least specific to Percy Jackson, the reason why people have been talking about it more in general with the book banning like stuff is because of how severe the Project 2025 stuff is about that, that they want to arrest librarians for sex crimes. Mm -hmm. And so any literally almost any book that is out there would apply under their rule. And it's one of those things of because he is now president and he already has control of the Supreme Court from the last time he was president. Yeah. And they have control over the House of Representatives and they might have control over the the Senate too, I honestly don't know, but they have control over so many things that it's actually possible for them to try to do these things. And it just makes you think about like, okay, if they ban books from all these libraries, then like if they, especially if they ban books from the library saying that they would charge you with like a crime Mm -hmm. if you had those books and like gave them to a child or something or just had the books at all that you would be 
possibly charged with like a criminal crime then it's it's hard for me to believe that like other places that sell books like amazon that are like corporate run and like like trump like asshole face like tweeted the day of the election results like congratulating Mm -hmm. trump on winning jeff bezos is who i mean he congratulated um trump on winning and obviously he would vote for trump and so a lot of like top corporate people would. And so it's hard to believe that if there was that sort of a threat that they wouldn't just start pulling that stuff from their websites. And like, yeah, there's gonna be like independent people, like bookstores that won't give in that easy, but it's more of just a scary thing to think about how that could be something that people even have to worry about. Yeah. And it just especially makes me really angry because the people that are being affected the most are Gen Alpha, who could not vote. Yes. They had no part in this at all. And it reminds me so much of when I was 15 was the 2000 election when George Bush won. They said that he won. He didn't really win, but what? (laughs) that's a whole other subject. (laughs) But he was named at least the president of that of that election i was so mad then that i couldn't vote against him because i already hated him and you know the next year was when september 11th happened and then the iraq war happened and all these things happened that destroyed like my generation my the year the age that i am our lives for up until now and we're Mm -hmm. still being affected by those decisions now and so I hated the fact that when I was that age that all these things happened in my life because of other people. Other people decided to elect that guy and it ruined my life. And okay. um, I don't want to just like, I don't want us to do what we people did back then with millennials and just kind of like hand waved it. And we're just like, oh, this is just how things are. And it's like, no, I don't want to do that with these kids. Like these kids haven't done anything. They've grown up in a world where they're told that they have to go to school. They're all, they also might be murdered at school and nobody cares. Yeah. Like the last thing these kids need is for their freaking books to be taken away. Like out of everything that is happening to them, that is like the priority is that they can't read the books that they love anymore because somehow books are going to do something to them that being shot and killed at school won't. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, like, the literacy rate's already going down. People talk about this all the time when it comes to Gen Alpha because they had to do school from home one of the years so far. Mm -hmm. Some of the people who didn't have an environment at home that fostered, you know, reading, independent thinking, things like that, really suffered in that year that they had to be at home with their parents. Nobody involved with Trump actually cares about what happens to kids. Yeah. They don't at all. If they did, they wouldn't be doing any of this stuff. They don't actually care. They're just, they say that they're trying to protect children because it's harder for people to argue against what they want to do if they say they're doing it to protect kids. But that's why it makes me like literally like murderous when people say stuff like that and try to use like child sex abuse as like an out. And it's like, I have not given you permission to use my life as a way for you to be a horrible monster. No. You don't get to use my life and what happened to me as an excuse for you to be a horrible human being. If you're going to be a horrible human being, just own up to it and don't try to act like you're actually a nice person when we know you're not. They're trying to divide us all by making trans people enemy number one. Mm -hmm. And we've seen, so I don't know like about your local elections. We had to vote in California to make sure the wording was like just right on gay marriage in the state because i'm sure that that was preemptive of like let's preempt anything that's going to happen with trump and so like the fact that i had to vote again to protect gay marriage in my state is so crazy but it all comes back to like they started with trans people and i believe project 2025 might even say something about this like if you start with them, that it's easier to divide up the rest of the queer community, the LGBTQ community, and specifically separating out that T, then, you know, like we could tackle everybody else later. It's supposed to be a book about Nico and his boyfriend coming out next year. 
And now I'm like, I don't honestly don't know what's going to happen with that. Are they going to put it out anyway? We'll see like with what they decide how far they get with things by then of mm -hmm. like what will happen. But it's just a ridiculous thing to think about that this sort of stuff is all up in the air because this guy won. But that's just how this stuff is going to be now. But they say the purpose behind it is is limiting or eliminating classroom discussions on race, gender identity, and sexuality because they feel there's an ideological bias in classrooms about those things. Yeah, they, like I said before, they want to, they want people to only think the way that they think. Mm -hmm. And so they want to take, have total control over what is taught because they think that if they do that, then everyone will just agree with them. It's like, it's a very simplistic way of thinking, but it, I find that like really abusive people are like almost childlike sometimes by how simple they think things work. And yeah. that the people behind Project 2025 just think that if they don't let kids learn anything, but what they tell them that everyone will just magically agree with them and that they will never have to worry about losing an another election ever again. And I wanted to give people some some things that I think that like we can kind of do as a fandom with Percy Jackson to preempt this um, and or at least preempt it when it comes to our access to Percy Jackson, because we did have a few people um, in our YouTube comments, particularly that are like, well, shit, you know, if I don't have libraries, if I don't have schools, I don't have these books anymore. And um, so some some ideas I came up with right now is I know in my family we're starting to ask about Christmas lists. Put them on your Christmas lists. All the books, like you want paper versions of the books just in case so that no digital access can be taken away like that. Um, so put the paper copies on your Christmas list if you are a child. And um, any gift cards and stuff should go to that if if that is a priority for you to continue reading those books. Um, we have at least found a few different audio versions on YouTube. I know that I joked about the one that I was listening to because it got sillier as time <laughs> went on because the guy couldn't do any more voices. So instead he gave everybody weird accents. <laughs> like, why is Talia Scottish? <laughs> um, anyways, um, there are versions like that. And I do know with audiobooks, like the narrator is everything. So um you might struggle along but those are out there um you even found like a a text version online when you were reading before you were able to get new paperback copies mm -hmm. i just literally googled sea of monsters pdf and a yep. pdf in a random library in england showed up so it's in england so mm -hmm. that one should be okay yeah yeah, um, so there are places online that have access to, you know, like copies, and it doesn't seem like Rick Riordan is, you know, particularly big on going after them. I don't know how much we can speak for Disney, because I know they're kind of the parent company behind it, and they, they do get rather litigious with stuff like that. Um, but if, if anything, we talked about potentially doing our own live readings of, um, Percy Jackson, which like we could do an hour of like reading and then commentary afterwards. So that way, if you only want to stick around for the book part, you can stick around mm -hmm. for that part. But if you are an actual adult and these books mean a lot to you, read them to your kids. Doesn't matter how young. The first time I read William the Harry Potter series, which like, you know, of course, we feel differently about Harry Potter these days was I think he was one years old. And so I have a video of him barely talking, saying I want to read Harry Potter and following me <laughs> around with the book. Um, but like I made it a bedtime ritual to read to him for at least an hour every day since he was a little over a year and a half. And I've had so many teachers be like, you don't, you don't even know how few parents do this right now. Like, it's, it's kind of amazing that you guys have kept it up and kept it up this long because he still does it with mm -hmm. me. But he still is okay with me crawling into bed with him and reading with him for a little bit. So, um, like, read them to your kids, your big kids, your little kids, and, or if you're just a big sibling or an aunt or uncle right now, like, 
you can read it to them. Um, that's another way to kind of pass it on to the next generation because um, I mean, what I try to say to William, as much as it's a pain in my side sometimes, is that um, I'm not raising a dog. I'm not looking for perfect obedience. I'm looking for somebody who questions authority, and that includes my authority over him and his dad's authority over him. Mm -hmm. um, and giving them these tools, like Percy Jackson is 100% a kid who's not afraid to question authority. Nope. He challenges so many gods, and like he could get poofed away in an instant challenging these gods but he still does it mm -hmm. um and i will yeah. say t to remind people too that if you have like littler kids there are um graphic novels mm -hmm. the, the graphic novel for house of hades just came out like in the last month and yeah, so yeah. that's almost all of the first that's book nine out of the first like 10 percy jackson books and so if your kids are little enough where you don't think they would stay focused when you're actually reading, you can show them that at least to start. And because that all of that stuff is out there for anyone to get still. Mm -hmm. And I guess we're just trying to give people options to like get ready for this in a way that feels like we have some sort of control over something when, yeah. we, when we don't really have control over much. <laughs> Yeah, um, what we can control is if, if at all possible, try to get your guys' hands on copies of those paperback books and um, read them, give them to other kids, pass them around. Um, these are not something that we want to let actually be censored out of our society. No.